Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to do an update in Cineworld and what's going on at the moment. Is it a buy or is it going bankrupt? So this is after the stock was up 200% yesterday and I knew there was something going on with Cineworld before I saw what was happening with the share price because on the past Cineworld videos I did, there was a few comments starting to pick up and I was like, oh, there's quite a few people commenting on these videos. There must be something going on with Cineworld today. And then I looked at the stock and I saw the share price and went, ah, that explains what's going on here. So we're going to take a look at what's going on after that big jump in share price. And also today we do have the Fed and their meeting and that will probably move the stock market a little bit today. So we'll see what happens there. And I might be doing a video on that in a little bit in the future. So uh, we'll see what happens there today because I'm sure that will impact the market a little bit. But let's get stuck onto Cineworld and see what's going on in here. And just to let you know, yesterday I put this video up doing an update into Huya. Um, I thought this was a really highly requested video. I had like messages on Instagram, I had like quite a few comments and then comments were getting quite a few likes. I was like, okay, there's a bit of demand for a Huya update. I did the video and boom, it did absolutely awful. So uh, I might have to really think about doing these uh, these videos and see, think of the popular and then they turn out to be absolutely terrible. So if you did want to see that, do make sure you check out that video because it did absolutely poorly yesterday. But getting stuck onto Cineworlds, so yeah, as you can see here, it's obviously up quite a bit yesterday. It was up nearly 200%, absolute explosion of a day. And you can see here, the stock did really rally up as the news came out about their financing and potentially what's going on with the bankruptcy at the moment with Sydney World. So it did absolutely amazing. Even though the stock looked absolutely amazing yesterday, unfortunately though, it is a bit of a uglier picture when you uh, zoom out a little bit and you look at what it was, the share price was in 2019. Going through that CV times, it was one of the stocks that got hit massively hard. And then since the CV times, it's even down since then. So it's still at very low levels uh, compared to where it's been historically, but it has had a nice bump up recently. And unfortunately, a stock like Cineworld, it has been hit really hard in the last two years because of the whole CV situation. Unfortunately, they timed a acquisition really badly, buying more cinemas right before CV. That hurt them massively and also the support from the government has been really poor really through that CV times. You know, they were basically forced to be shut for 12 months when they were able to be open for 12 months with a lack of support. Uh, then they put the mask mandate in and you basically had to go to the cinema wearing masks. So obviously that put people off as well. Um, so basically Sydney World had a year and a half of basically the government making life really hard for them and a lack of support and obviously that's been hitting them quite hard. Now I've got to say I actually went to the Sydney World a couple of weeks back and I did walk in and I thought you know what I really do hope things work out for Sydney World. Um, obviously last time I posted about Sydney World I was quite negative on the stock but I said you know at the end of the day even though I'm quite negative on the stock I still hope it works out for the business. I don't want the business to disappear. I don't want people to lose jobs. I think obviously I, I do enjoy the cinemas. It'll be another loss to the high street if you can call it like a a high street shop, I guess, or a leisure location. I didn't want that to happen. Obviously, the shareholders, any shareholders, I want it to work out for them. And any stock, I want it to work out for people because we, you know, I don't, we don't want people losing money here. But obviously, last time I did an update on it, it was pretty negative on what was going on. And last time we talked about this is when it came out about the bankruptcy, and that was what caused a massive drop in the share price, and it went from 20p, you know, all the way down to 1-2p at the time. Now, there was some news yesterday and that's what caused the 200% jump in the share price on Cineworld and that was Cineworld reaches bankruptcy settlement with landlord lenders. So it said that movie theatre chain Cineworld on Monday announced a bankruptcy settlement with its landlords and lenders, clearing the way for the company to borrow an additional 150 million and make a 1 billion debt repayment. Now this is pretty impressive because when you looked at the debt on that balance sheet, it was like, is there going to be anyone kind of brave enough to step in in here and help Cineworld? Uh, landlords and junior creditors dropped their opposition to the billion dollar debt repayment after Cineworld agreed to pay at least 20 million in rent that will occur after September the 30th. Britain City World, which filed for bankruptcy protection in Texas in September with less than $4 million in cash on hand, previously did not intend to make any post-September rent payments until the end of its bankruptcy. City World, the world's second largest cinema chain operator, also agreed to explore a potential sale of the business and allow creditor input on its business plan. So that's quite key and probably one of the terms that really helped it get this extra cash that it needed. US bankruptcy judge Marvin I don't know if I said that right. Um, in Houston said that the agreement was a pretty amazing result. It was given that balance sheet. Given the widespread landlord and creditor opposition to Cineworld's bankruptcy financing at the start of its chapter 11 case. 
Cine World, which owns Regal Cinema, operates more than 9,000 screens across 10 countries and employs around 28,000 people. The company cited difficult conditions for movie theatres as well as the high debt stemming from its 3.6 billion purchase of Regal as a reason for its bankruptcy filing. Yeah, that obviously is one of the reasons. Obviously, making an acquisition right around the CV times is obviously a bit of an issue. And obviously, I think there was a Cineplex deal as well. Um, so this has obviously been a bit of a hit for Cineworld at the moment. I think the big thing is the the current environment that they mentioned. If we look at the share price, probably a big reason for this pop off yesterday is because you know Cineworld were in bankruptcy and they basically got the note of like, okay, you're actually okay to survive for a couple more months, and that's what people are playing at the moment. They've gone from a bankruptcy to okay, you, you could be okay for the next couple of months. And that was the excitement around it. And I think the relief around Cineworld and the, and the pop in the share price. The problem still remains with Cineworld is that you could argue this has delayed what could potentially happen in the long term, which is that balance sheet. You know, this is probably why they're looking for potentially some sort of sale, some sort of capital raise because they survived for the next few months. But unfortunately, that balance sheet is still not in a pretty place. As you can see here, you know, from 2019, the debt that's increased from 3.6 billion up to you know 5.1 billion, it's just it's just keep increasing in these last two years, and that is a very heavy debt balance. You know, 5.1 billion when you're a 96 million market cap company, wow. Um, and as we see there, you know, it said here that they had four, I think it was four million in cash. Um, Super Wall Street last has their cash balance of the last earnings is 130 million. So. Yeah, I mean, the cash balance to debt is obviously really ugly. And the problem is, is what they mentioned in the trading update is that the last quarter, if we look at the last quarter for Cineworld, it was really bad. You know, they said that demand was a lot further below what they were expecting. And you'll see here that they said that the, uh, at the time, the cash burn was $144 million at the moment, which is moving a little bit more in the positive uh, direction, but it's lower than what was expected on the recovery. And this caused massive problems because they kept losing money and they were burning through that cash balance. So when you've already got an ugly cash balance, that was not helping things. And that's probably one of the reasons why this went into the bankruptcy is that they were hoping to get a bit more to profitability, what analysts were expecting and what they were expecting. And it didn't happen. And obviously you can't afford to be burning cash when you've got a balance sheet like this. So even though they've got the agreement at the moment and that's a good thing that Sydney World will last for a little bit longer, unfortunately the balance sheet is still there overhanging and the problem is it's still got to move back into profitability. And they said that this was during a time where film releases weren't positive for the cinema and I was like, I actually thought they weren't too bad in that period of time. So yeah, this is the big problem. I mean, Alice aren't currently forecasting what they think profit will be but they really do need to start moving into a positive direction here. And that's one of the key things that they need right now to help with that cash burn. So obviously this is great news for Cineworld that they're gonna be around a little bit longer, but I think in the long term, there's still major problems overhanging this with that balance sheet, with the cash burn that they need to rotate around. And it's still, in my opinion, a very, very high risky play. And for me personally, it's not one that I would touch still. Now I know there's a few people that will say, oh, but you could have bought it in 2p and now it's 7p. Very much you could have done, but at that time it was very much red or black whether or not Sydney World would get some financing to help them through the time. And obviously right now, obviously congratulations if you played that, but the thing is, you know, if you go back there and if you keep playing them opportunities, it's a bit like red or black, you know, sometimes you can buy that and it worked and you know, this time around, it worked out and you look an absolute genius if you did buy Cineworld. But there'll be other times, very similar situations where you could be playing stocks like this and they don't get any support, any financing, any extra lending and it can end very terribly. So even though I know the outcome, it doesn't really change my opinion in these sort of situations. Very, very high risk play when you get involved in these bank stocks that are looking at potentially bankruptcy. And I would still say the same thing if there was another very much like Cineworld situation. Um, obviously congratulations if it worked out but there's still to get involved in these sort of plays are very high risk and even right now looking at me and Cine, at Cineworld I saw a few people like quite positive on it yesterday and like oh now it's going up to 20p could we see one pound by the end of the year and I was like I won't get too carried away there's still a few problems here for me overhanging here with the balance sheet and um, obviously the, cin the cinema industry is not going quite strong at the moment you look at Cineworld they're saying that you know it's below expectations they're still driving profit uh, well they aren't making profit the losses are still there uh, that's obviously going to put more pressure on that balance sheet which is obviously quite uh, ugly at the moment which isn't great so yeah for me personally obviously it's a high risk high reward and you know potentially you could buy this if you wanted to and if it works out you will be 
and Cine World goes back to doing stuff. It was you know financials that it was doing before 2020. Uh, you know, started doing 2019, 2018 financials, and you'll be rewarded handsomely with this. You know, you could be rewarded with uh, you know I would say I was going to say a ten bagger, but it'd probably be even more than that. But you've got to weigh up the risk, and I still think there's a lot of risk here. Per too much risk for me personally, and that's personally why I won't touch it. But yeah, um, that's the update into City World. So you know, well done if you did kind of buy that dip and stuck through it. You know, it did work out for you. But for me personally, I still think there's way too much risk on this one. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Anyway, guys, hit the like button if you're new around here. Subscribe, and I'll catch you in a bit.